is Ed Modell. I'm the community liaison for educational equity with the Queen Anne's County Public Schools, and I'm delighted to uh, have uh, been hired to do this on a part-time basis. I've been at the job about three weeks now, and I'm getting a real education about uh, educational equity and, and uh, what's going on here in Queen Anne's County. Well, I hope to uh, accomplish a few things. Um, there's a new education that is multicultural program policy that's been adopted by our Board of Education. Um, it, uh, there are four goal areas that the, uh, the county leadership staff has set. One has to do with uh, increasing the number of minority students in AP classes, advanced placement classes, and in gifted and talented programs. Another has to do with hiring more uh, teachers and administrative staff of color. And the fourth area is uh, reducing the disproportionate number of minority students who are disciplined. In Queen Anne's County, the last couple of years, three times uh, the number of black males in particular have been disciplined with uh, suspensions, for example. And there's a sense before I got here that that some, somehow is disproportionate and needs to be, uh, through professional development or otherwise, um, reduced and made more equitable. So um, this job came about as a result of, actually it's been about 20 years in the making. In 1994, the State Equity Office in the Department of Education did a study on race equity here in Queen Anne's County, and one of the recommendations that came out of that study was that the superintendent of schools um, appoint a community liaison, somebody to act as a bridge between the school system, the community in terms of the government, in terms of businesses, and with a particular emphasis on improving race relations here in the county. Um, with the new interim superintendent, Mr. Paluski, and associate assistant superintendent, Ms. Pauls and this new policy that's been adopted by the Board of Education, um, they determined that some funds could be made available for a part-time position to hire uh, a person to, to fill this role. I was extremely interested in it. I've been interested in this whole area of civil rights and civil liberties and race relations in my entire career as a lawyer in the last 10, 12 years doing dispute resolution work and executive coaching work and it's always been a great interest of mine in here having an opportunity to do this and hopefully make some impact here in Queen Anne's County is a, a real challenge and a great opportunity. Well in terms of getting the messages of what we're doing into the classroom um, I, I actually feel that that's not my immediate role. Um, what I'm doing this month and next month for November and December since I just came on board a few weeks ago, is to meet with as many uh, groups and committees as I can to get my own feeling for um, what the situation is in the schools in the county. I'm also meeting with, with community people like our commissioners, um, the executive director of the Queen Anne's Chamber of Commerce, which does a tremendous amount of, of projects and programs related to our schools and our students. In fact, in January, there'll be another um, business education breakfast meeting, the annual meeting, where uh, Mr. Paluski will give a state of education in Queen Anne's County uh, remarks at that. So uh, my role, I think, will be uh, after these two months of going to numerous meetings and talking with individuals uh, to come up with a plan. Uh, Mr. Paluski asked me to do that rather than uh, jumping off without the information and knowledge that I need to have in order to determine the best use of, of my time as well as where I can have the greatest impact. But I, I don't think it's actually going to be in the classrooms themselves. I think it's going to be in terms of um, programs and projects outside of the classrooms. We have you know, a wonderful curriculum and instruction group led by um, Assistant Superintendent Pauls at this point, and uh, that's never never been something that I've been an expert in, and so I will leave it to the experts to uh, to work with that. 
So I've also, my wife, uh, Mara Rockland, and I have uh, also been very deeply involved in these conversations on race that we've been having here in Queen Anne's County since June. We actually joined the uh, Multicultural Proficiency Committee meetings in March when we first heard about them. Uh, that falls under the local management board. It's a, it's a county committee. Um, and then we also just almost simultaneously learned about these conversations on race and Sunday suppers that were being conducted in Talbot County. Uh, we met with uh, the, the leaders in Talbot County, uh, Bishop Johnson, Rabbi Hyman, and uh, St. Michael's Police Chief Smith, Anthony Smith, to get a sense of what they were doing and, and uh, so that we invented the wheel perhaps without some of the, the missteps that they could describe to us. But in any event, they, they started this project in Talbot County about two years ago, right after the events in Ferguson, Missouri. And their um, whole ob objective was to see what they could do to improve race relations in Talbot County so that a Ferguson basically wouldn't occur there, which was a very worthwhile endeavor, we thought. So when we heard about it and we found out the details about how they were doing these Sunday suppers, literally in churches, uh, they had done three of them. Uh, one in, in actually the, the uh, St. Michael's Yacht Club, which was um, uh, Police Chief Smith's idea to bring people together in the Yacht Club who had never sat down and talked about anything, let alone race relations. Um, but we started this in June with a, about a 60-person conversation on race at the Kramer Center. It was basically bringing together black and white and Hispanic community leaders, including uh, Commissioner Mark Anderson, uh, Sheriff Gary Hoffman, uh, Mr. Paluski was there. Um, and we had citizens like uh, those involved in our Multicultural Proficiency Committee groups who were interested in the topic and willing basically to, uh, to sit down and have those courageous conversations about race that I understand have never really been had here and, and in most communities they've never occurred. That was very successful. We went on just a couple of months later in August to have a second Sunday supper with a focus on faith-based organizations. I never knew this, but I we heard it said that um, Sunday morning is the most segregated time in America because of the different races going to their separate churches. And indeed, uh, we heard stories about how people from white churches had never gone to black churches, although Pastor Farnell, actually that very day in August when we had our Sunday supper that morning, a group from his United Methodist Church in Centerville had gone to a, a black church in the county. So we've, we, we uh, the, the members in the committee had an idea that if we could bring faith-based organizations together, we basically sent out an invitation to the leaders of maybe a dozen churches in the county and asked them to bring along people from their congregations. And that again was very successful. We had, in fact, um, Maddie Hollis, I told this story, sat next to me at my table. She's 89 years old and we had the Sunday supper at the Kennard Center which has now been refurbished. It was the last segregated school in Queen Anne's County, um, desegregated in 1967 or so. And uh, Ms. Hollis actually had taught in that school, and she got up at the end when we asked people to voluntarily give their reflections on the conversations that we had had. And I'll never forget this. She got up and said, uh, if you had told me 65 years ago that I would be standing or sitting here in a conversation on race with white and black people from Queen Anne's County, she said, I never would have believed that this could be possible. She, she wanted to describe the conversation as a miracle. And so, you know, for faith-based organizations, I guess we had had a successful <laughs> Sunday supper. Um, from that, uh, Mr. Paluski actually asked us if we would organize, our committee would organize one around the schools in the county, and uh, that's what we did with this third one on November 10th. It was, uh, I guess, successful beyond our dreams. We had about 150 people there. We had 19 tables of eight or nine people with a trained facilitator at each table. And I can tell you from my table and from what I heard about other tables, we had very frank, open, and honest conversations about our experience with racial issues. And one of the questions that we asked each table to address is, what can we do as a community to improve race relations in the county? 
And at the end of the, the evening, uh, people got up from various tables, including my table, and said, one of the things uh, we've thought about is how to bring these conversations on race to the individual schools around the county. We had most of the principals there, some students as well, and a lot of faculty. And I heard, for example, at Queen Anne's County High School that they've already started talking about ideas of how to do something similar to this, and you know it'll be up to each principal and each school to decide what works best for it. I don't think it's going to be imposed on any any school in the county, but uh, we're hoping that the enthusiasm and the candor and honesty of that conversation will carry over into the schools and have an impact there. Um, and of course, uh, I believe uh, I know Mr. Paluski and Ms. Pauls believe that. Um, this community is a creative and resourceful community, and if anybody has ideas of projects or programs, either for the Multicultural Proficiency Committee or for the schools themselves, uh, please contact me. We're always open to new ideas. We, uh, it doesn't have to be invented by us in order to be creative and successful. You can contact me th through my cell phone. The number is 703 819 Seven five two one. That's seven zero three eight one nine seven five two one. If I'm not available, I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. And I encourage everybody to uh, contact me either through my cell phone or by email. You can contact me at ed dot model e d dot m o d e l l at q a c p s dot org. Uh, and I do check my emails regularly, so I will get back to you promptly. Mm -hmm.